Well, uh, can I just say, people, that it's like, it's quarter to four in the morning. Uh, I didn't get home while one from York. We went to that COVID site and they arrested us. And uh, they, they knew who we was. One officer actually said, he followed me on YouTube. He said, do you like my videos? I thought, well, Sam. I said, well, you know I report on good cop, bad cop, don't you? And he said, yeah, of course I do, mate. Well, he didn't say mate. He said, yeah, yeah, of course I do. I've seen your videos. And I thought, yeah, you've been spying on me, haven't you? So we're already 50. So then when they took attitude that they did, they were trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Wolf in sheep's clothing. You know who I'm talking about, don't you, PC? Well, I'm going to expose you. And you officers that tried to prevent me from auditing the police station when you physically threw me out, you grabbed hold of me, one of you on each side, and that young fucking bird about five foot. I've noticed something about your police station. And Marty Blackburn noticed the same thing as well. Well, as you know, we refer to you as pigs. Sausages. Sausage. Sausage. And like I told you, you little muppet, with two pips on your shoulders. After 12 hours, when you came to my cell and I said to you, have you contacted my solicitor yet? He said, uh, no, they're not ready to interview you yet. I said, what do you mean? We were only on the site 20 minutes. It's been 12 hours. What's the matter with you? There can't be any statements. There won't anybody apart from security staff. There were more security staff than there was patients for COVID tests. In fact, we only counted five cars in 25 minutes. And they were very insistent that the gate that they put up, that I've shown you on the video, I've shown them to be the tyrants that they are, you liars. Grasses. It don't matter which way you look at it, you can't put a security uniform on and then go against your community, mate, and become a drag, a grass. That's what you did. You allowed your boss to phone the police on us. You should have said, instead of saying, look, mate, well, come on, mate, give us a break. We're, we're only doing this job. I said, yeah, mate, and we're doing our fucking job. And I called him something that I shouldn't. I think I called him a Muppet or something like that. What it is, I get fired up and emotions take over me and like you were saying, it was only doing a job. So fair dues, mate, you're doing a job. But do a great job, mate. Don't grass on your own people. Because that's what you're doing. You grass me up, end of day, mate. It don't matter which way you dress it up. You contacted police. What for? Because we run right, rings round here. Because we played chase the old man. That's what you did.
Shame on you. You chased the fucking old man. You didn't go for lad six foot fucking six. Could stride over your tape. You told him it was fencing. It was fucking tape. You lied. You lied. That makes you tyrants. It don't matter what we did. It's what you did that matters. You didn't do all your jobs properly, boys. When you closed that gate and I congratulated you. And said that's what you should have done, boys. Even two security, that's all you needed on that gate. You'd have the lady stood there on her own anyway. One more of you. And you could have had a gate to police. She could have done her job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open the gate. Let them in. Close the gate. Next customer. Another hour or two later. Because, like I said, you only had five cars in 25 minutes. So what I'd like to say to you, Prime Minister, I can't even remember your name because I don't follow you people. Because none of you know what you're doing. You tell us not to do this, not to do that, and then you'll do it. How many MPs are from up Scotland even? Don't go visiting. She was straight off, wasn't she? Straight off. That other councillor from down London, yeah, he did the same thing as well. Yeah, yeah. You've done it as well, haven't you, Prime Minister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Praise the NHS. Are you having a laugh? Are you people having a laugh? If they've done the job and looked after patients that have been very ill, nobody's disputing that. That's why the nurses aren't there and doctors. You can't say, oh, I don't want to be a nurse now just because a bad disease comes along. This disease now is no different to what whooping cough, scarlet fever, polio. I've had all these uh, diseases about in my lifetime. My friend and neighbour next door, when I lived on Hillside at Briley, was the Roebucks. Janice Roebuck was the last, and I honestly, honest to God, his name has gone right out of my head. I hate it when that happens. He lived at number seven, Mark Roebuck, I think his name was. I am 63, yeah, fair dose. I am losing plot a bit. Fair dose. And I think things are getting worse because of all, all spinal cord damage. They're basically one of the top deans in country from the uh, Clement private clinic at Sheffield. has told me that the fifth and sixth, what I actually had was, in 2013, they diagnosed it in 2009, I had a fifth and sixth anterior cervical disectomy with fixation and fusion. Basically, they put your head in a main, in a halo, bolt you to a, operating table and the sky you see at front of my neck is where they actually go in uh, I don't know if you can see it I don't know if you can see it on that but it's roughly a couple of inches long and they go in there believe it or not and that's because they put your head right back bolt you with manger the uh, halo that goes round your head and it bolts into the side of your head that is horrible that and then that is actually bolted to operating table so 
you can't even involuntary twitch. Because when they go in and round, they have to avoid a lot of nerves, other nerves. And that's where all damage can be caused as well. During the op, damage to sciatic nerve and other nerves that run down your arms and that. Which is what the damaged in me, so it affects all my right hand side mainly. But the way I found out and had this other MRI done that I had all this severe damage and it was actually lights out, basically, was all the symptoms I had down the right hand side, I was now getting down the left hand side and I was twitching more because when it's trapped or bone hurt as touching nerve, that's when it creates that twitch. And where to describe the twitch to you? You know when you've got a, your legs like resting on a nerve and it starts bouncing and you just leave it as it is and it'll keep on bounce, bouncing. And it's a uh, non-controllable bouncing. So you the longer you don't move, the longer it'll keep bouncing. Well, imagine that through every part of your body and not being able to control it. I've been stood outside in the sun with friends in the garden in the sun, a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. And I've been twitching like mad. And they used to stand next to me and look and they used to say to me, are you, are you cold or what? And I said, what are you on about? They said, you're twitching like mad. And my doctors kept telling me they went out wrong. And that was from, right from 2009. No, they diagnosed it in 2009. It was actually a couple of years before that. All the twitching and stuff were going on. And I kept going to my doctors and they kept saying that they went out wrong. Till eventually I, I threatened them and I said, right, I'm going to go pay for an MRI. And if there's all wrong, I'm going to sue you. So they sent me for MRI anyway, which saved me a few bob. Turns out, a day later, doctors like that spied through my window. Through my living room window. So I went to the door and I said, uh, oh God, this doesn't look good, mate. Because my mate was sat there as well. He was actually building the joint at the time. And my doctor said that he'd seen what he was doing it, but he totally agreed with it. He like he relieved it, it relieved the pain. And that's what I smoked it for at the time, but I had to stop because I didn't like the nicotine. And when they diagnosed all the damage in my neck, I thought, because I was going to be in hospital a few days, when you had to the smoke and you for a couple of days, even just a day. If you were like me, an heavy smoker, you coughing, phlegm up and everything. Well, when you've had severe operation like that on your neck, you don't want to be coughing, yeah. So as soon as they diagnosed it, I stopped smoking from that day on. And it will thought to that, and fear of hospitals, because I do fear hospitals, Although I worship the surgeons, I do worship surgeons because to me, they are the nearest thing to God as I see it. I don't believe there's a God because I don't believe God would allow Roman Catholic people to allow a known C of E be an altar boy in their church and they can't deny that because when I went there it's on my records and I'm sorry I keep going back to that and that's because of all this mental behaviour and all this all boils back to that and it's lift free at Army Prison, first video he ever did. 
that spurred me to do this, as I've said before. But my reason for contacting him also, I thought, pick pro quo. I give him information. He can sort me out and get me into this rehabilitation unit he's talking about. So he saw the auditor, no, sorry, strike that auditor. I'm not an auditor. I always thought auditor were odd, but then when things happened and it, way things happened and other people thought same thing as well. Because we're actually reporting. I'm reporting them bent coppers, including the ones that attacked me, back to that subject. When they physically launched me out, they knew I was going to audit the police station. Because I told them. I even told the little inspector about less than five foot he is. Bless him. He looks like that little screw at Armley. It, not Armley, HMP Umber that set lift free up with dogs. He, he, he even looked like him, fat little cunt. Well, this inspector came down to my cell and he was saying, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep you 24 hours. I said, crack on, mate, crack on. I said, now I'll tell you fucking what as well. Get out of this cell. So he ran off with his tail between his legs, shouting abuse. So I thought, oh, yeah, do you want to start that game, dear? Piggy. So I started shouting piggy rhymes through the door, calling them all piggies and dismissing them. And then I'd be as nice as hell, excuse me, officer. Have you got a cup of coffee, please? One sugar. And as soon as they gave it me through the arch, I'd say you dismissed, piggy. Dismissed. When I was at the charge desk, Taking my bottoms off, the police station bottoms, and they were saying, no, no, keep them on, keep them on. Uh, you can just take your bag. I said, listen, I came in in my clothes. I'm leaving in them. So I ripped the bag open outside the charge desk and started getting dressed. Main thing was, was to see if they'd left me phone. And they had the Muppets, even after I told them, even while I was in the interview room, setting the interview up, I told them when I get out of this police station, because I fully expected them to keep my camera, keep my phone. I said, when I get out of this police station, because I didn't think it was going to take them all night, I'm going to go straight away and buy a phone and I'm coming back and I'm auditing this police station. I said, I love Ben Coppers. Pig, 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 pig. Pig. Sausage, sausage. It's on the tape. I'm getting tape. I'm going to put the tape up, the interview tape. Apparently, you you get them. They do three tapes, three CDs in the machine. And one, the seal up with your name on it, and it's put in the charge room. So you can ask them for that. They said it was going to be put in my bag, but I'm coming for it. Now, because they knew I was going to audit them. And I've got a legitimate reason to be there. And I've told them about good cop, bad cop, and that there were no such thing as good cop. Because even as a cleaner, any one of you, if you worked as a cleaner in any police station in the country you want, if you want to get a job, get two, and I'll come with you and prove my point. 
Within one week, we can find out who most of the police bent in that police station are. So let me ask you this. If we can do that, that little dwarf inspector, how's he got to be inspector? Because I was supposed to believe he doesn't know. Well, that's how thick they are. When I slipped that bag open, I saw my phone. I thought, yes. So first thing I did was grab the phone into my hand and turning it on while I was getting dressed. And I kept looking at it. They were all stood there looking at me, trying to rush me on. So, and I know now why, because they, they know about the blockers. And if they march me out at the police station fast enough, their blockers will block my signal. But what, they didn't bank on. That last few, that last doorway was actually public accessible. So blocker don't work in that part, so my phone turned straight on, I was both straight on. And I've got your officers assaulting me. I have got you on video. You're getting exposed. The video's getting uploaded and I'm suing you. I've just got out of the bath. It is now 10 past four in the morning. I can't sleep on that I've took about it. And at first I didn't think uh, damage. I just thought the bruising I could feel. I just thought it was just because I've knocked myself up a bit. Being laid on that wooden bench. But when they, two of them grabbed me in the corridor because they knew my phone were loading up. They were even trying to look at the screen to see, because it had a thing on it saying oh, it was all locked. And as soon as I got through that first door, it lit up. So we're pressing the buttons. By now, there's a copper on each arm. And they're physically put. take this opportunity to uh, do a little short video while I'm uh, waiting for Mr. Blackbird to come. Uh, he's picking me up and uh, we're out today and uh, I'm not sure where we're going but uh, I'm glad to be out and about uh, now uh, I've had a lot of messing about with police telling me what I can do and what I can't do and where I can do it and where I can't do it well now I've got rid of them bell conditions and uh, I'm out today and uh, I'm just going to try and get this on for you and as you can see there you go behind me I'll just get it there and uh, there's the shot for you boys that's the shot for today because Arthur Taylor is back on the road. We're on the road again. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. And uh, if I just go down this way a bit, 
and uh, let me just see if I can get this right. No, I'm sorry, I'm not very good with hand to eye coordination. Uh, but up that road up there behind me, where you see that van is going to be turning left as on towards the train station and smack in front where you've just seen that van is where that lad got beat half to death and I'd like to just give you an update on that at a minute uh, what actually happened what actually happened that uh, that lad that uh, that was uh, beaten half to death and uh, I thought he'd actually been taxed. Well, it turns out that uh, he hadn't been taxed. It was a New Year's party and he were a bit of a, shall we say, a bit of a gobby bit of a gobby person really, so I'm told. I don't know because I don't actually know him. But he thinks he's a bit of a cage fighter. So uh, you can imagine a New Year's party, a young lad with a gob on him and thinks he can have a go. He's had a go at wrong person That person's took offence and shown him what a proper fighter can do and beat him half to death and left him for dead. I totally disagree that the man beat him half to death and left him like that. I think that's a coward's thing, me. Fair enough, if somebody has a go at you, you've got to have a go back. And they can't complain about what happens because they have created it in the first place. So what I will say is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I think it's his own God that's got him in trouble at, of at New Year. But it doesn't excuse what they did to him. They left him in a coma on the street. That's not good, you don't do that to somebody. Fair enough, if we have a go, mate. If, I, if I'd if i won and I knocked you out or anything, which is highly unlikely, because I'm a lover, not a fighter. Uh, any fighting needing to be done, uh, as done by other people, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not a violent person. Uh, I used to be, but I, I can't afford to be anymore, can I? Let's get it right. I've got four vertebras in my neck, damaged, can't be repaired. They tried in 2013 and failed, and that's damaged fourth and seventh vertebras as well so basically surgeons are telling me it's it's part is over uh, I know you might think it's an odd thing to say but I am conditioning myself to the fact that Uh, shall we say my demise is coming sooner rather than later and I don't give a toss whether you people believe I'm doing these videos as my little legacy or not I don't give a toss you've asked me and I've told you it's down to you what you believe and what you don't believe 
and I don't give a monkey's fucking toss. So you people, all you trolls, just get on with it. Because from now on, instead of just leaving you and letting you get on with it, when I can be bothered, you're gone. Simple as. Removed. Dismissed. None your business. Big respect, none your business. Big respect. I've got the gimbal back, but it's a bit off kilter and all sorts of things, but a friend of mine has put an app on my laptop, which police have still got. And uh, what it does, when you, if you put your phone on and it's slightly off kilter sort of thing on the gimbal, it, uh, you can level it up with this thing, it's up plus and minus on it and press it and it, it sorts it out. And I don't know if it's because it's been stood and it hasn't been charged or what. It seems to be losing its charge. Uh, I'm going to go buy a power pack if I can get one before Marty gets here. So uh, I just thought I'd do this little video because it's early and I'm all excited. And I've just tried to see what lift is up to, but I can only get a video up that's posted up that I've already watched. So I'm guessing Lift Free is either still on his way home or is already home. So can I just say to you without further ado, Lift Free? I'm not right happy that you didn't let me come, mate. But what can I say? Uh, I think you did a brilliant job. You know me, I am a worrier. I know people think I'm just a knob. But what I will say is, if you're home, mate, once you get to this court thing out of way this afternoon, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to get a full body mass here of Shannon with some essential oils. Yeah, mate, I'm not joking. Flat on your back on to living room floor. You can have kids crawling about, poking you in eyes and everything while you're at, while she's doing it as well. Kids will think it's mint. Put them in that chair that you give them that chocolate with. You remember? Put Peppa Pig on for them. And they'll be happy, mate. Uh, I am actually buzzing that I know you're at least going to be home in the next few hours and you're at least in this up this area. As soon as you get dumped off, like, and you, you, you're there all of a sudden, you're there in Wolverhampton and you're thinking, what the fuck am I doing? Let me out. I'm cured. I've had the full treatment. Let me out, boss. Please, please, boss. I'll not do it again, boss. Well, I'm just uh, pottering about now. It's half past eight. Marty's picking me up at eleven. Wow. I've put washer on. 
I've marked kitchen floor. Uh, I've had a couple of cups of tea. I'm going to have a walk down the village. I've got to find a battery pack if I can. I'm going to get this phone back on charge. Because uh, Marty will definitely, definitely lead me astray. And then tonight, if all happens, he'll put it up on his channel and he'll, he'll point the finger and say it will me. Well, I'll tell you now, people. I'm just an old man, me. Let's get it right. I've had quite a few painkillers this morning. I'm floating about. But, oh God, I'm starting to shake as well. Uh, I don't know whether to take this gimbal. I'll just take this selfie stick I'm using at the minute. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take both because I don't know whether Marty knows it or not. We'll have to do a police station at least today. He won't be very happy. In fact, as soon as I say Marty, which police station's near here, mate? When we're uh, at our destination, shall I say? I nearly slipped up then. That's what Liv Free does, he slips up regular. He gets carried away with a moment. And uh, I forget to have his mask up. Or... It's not about the identity. It's got nothing to do with identity. It's about character. The people that comment on my channel already know me and have known me for donkey's years. And uh, there's been a, a few, shall we say, unsavoury comments that are supposed to be coming from people that are close to me. Well, let, you tell, let me tell you something. Any information you've got about me, I don't give a fuck. Because if I'm stupid enough to let muskers feel my collar, I deserve it to be felt. I don't do what you fucking trolls do and sit there and go, Oh boss, please, please don't lock me up, boss. Oh please, boss. I can't do we out with drugs, boss. If I get my collar felt, I shoot my gob. I let them do what they've got to do. I do what I have to do. And I make sure I've got blankets, a hot drink. And I always go for the drinking chocolate. You can't go wrong with drink, drinking chocolate, can you? And I always tell them to get you two, because them cups, they're only that size. Wow. And guys, turn that central heating off in themselves. Them fans. You're blowing cold air on prisoners with next to no tongue because you've took all the clothes off them, you muppets. We trap prisoners of war better than that. Let's have it right. This is why we call you fucking tyrants. That's because that's what you are. Well, let me tell you something else. The muskers have been parked outside my fucking house this morning. But, my head wasn't switched on. I still have bail conditions on my head. Do not, f do not film the police. Do not put the police on social media whatsoever. Well, let me tell you now, boys. You're going on. 
first copper I see. You better listen to me. You're going on TV. And who's going to put you there? Me. I might be some nut jack, old 63 year old. Dying of spinal injuries. But I don't give a fucking toss what you people think. Well, let me rephrase that. First off, can I say, I'm sorry for going on a bit. And can I just take this opportunity to uh, calm myself down and say a quick thank you for Max Maggie for watching Live Freeze Back online and I know you did because I kept seeing your name going up and that's why I kept saying respect, respect and I'm sorry I missed a load of people but at the end of the day I was jumping on Live Freeze Live and talking to people and taking over his channel and that, that, that's not good I was I was saying respect to people on his behalf that uh, were contributing for cups of coffee and stuff and uh, so I just said respect whoever it was on Live Free's behalf. Now, uh, as I've said, I'm out today. I'm going out to play. I don't know what time I'll be back. All I can say is I'll be back. Now, just to say once again, Welcome home, Live Free. And this is a special one from me. Happy 2021, mate. Get a hot bath, some essential oils on. Let massa uh, Shannon give you a foot massage and everything, mate. And take it easy. Here we are, folks, at Pockleton Bar. Test COVID site, and we are just emerging. Oops, we are just emerging, and it is pretty breezy. It is pretty breezy, folks. So, I'm sorry if you get a bit of wind noise, but uh, I'm very sorry I can't do an out about it. So, here we are, folks, and uh, we're at the the entrance. We're at the entrance for this test centre. And, uh, there it is, it's clearly marked entry entrance. And, uh, I am sorry because it's pretty windy and uh, So I am trying to keep the wind away best I can people. So here we are on the approach, the main entrance and I'm going to go this side if we go around this way. And there we have an interactive. 
and it's interaction shouting off off do not put your hands on me 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 no no I'm sorry I won't <laughs> do not, do not touch me, do not touch me, two meters back, two meters back, this is a Covid site. What are you saying? What are you saying? I haven't what? If you don't know, thank you for that. Thank you. Get your hand away from me. Keep the distance, please. You're obviously not two meters, are you? Back, then. back up. Back up. Back up. You're on a legal state, sir. You should be on this site. No, we're not. It is publicly accessible. No, it's not. You need to I've just test. walked on. No, I have just walked on. Right. I have walked on. You need to leave, please. I have walked on. I'm asking you to leave, please. That's all you can do, sir. Ask. I've asked you nicely. Could you leave, please? No. Why not? Because I confidently decline. We are here to do our job. And I said no. Can I ask a reason why? Yes, because I'm here. I'm, do, I'm here to get some photographs and some video. If you want some information, get no, information, no, information yeah. from you guys at all. For people. They are interested, that's all for. We haven't done as bit, boys. Stay back, stay back, two meters. Two meters, two meters, two meters, two meters. Can you tell your staff to stay back, please? No. No, I'm sorry, we decline, love. It isn't private. It is not private. It is publicly accessible. We have just walked on site. We have just walked on site. You shut up. Go away. Go away. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. We are not leaving. Now, if you want to go phone the police, you're quite welcome to do that. We do this all over the country, mate. We're not stupid. We're not law. Crack on. Crack on. Crack on. Do not put your hands on me. Do not put your hands on me. Do not put your hands on me. Step back. You're going on YouTube. This is live, mate. This is live. We're not. It's publicly accessible. It is publicly accessible. And there you go, my friend, Marty Blackborough. He has well penetrated. And as you can see, we are now in the COVID site and these people, these people are trying their best, they are trying their best to stop me getting through this here, yes. <laughs> And a ring a ding 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 ding. The what? Bunch of snowflakes. I don't know, mate. But as you can see. Listen, crack on, do your job, man. We're not here to stop you doing your jobs, are we? Crack on, boys, do your job. When you leave us alone, you might find we might have to leave. Clearly publicly accessible. Because I've been able to walk round here. We 
and uh, I'm disabled. Do not. And do not hit things into me. Who do you think you are? I didn't do that. Who do you think you are? You, you're on Who video. You you're on video, you Muppet. Muppet. Nothing. And as you can see, they have just thrown the ball hard. This chap here, just for the record, this big fat muppet, and this little muppet, I don't know what he thinks he can do. All right there, lads. I apologise. I apologise for that. I shouldn't have said that. Do you accept me apology? All right then, mate. I have apologised. Uh, well, uh, do not put your hands on me. Do not put your hands on me. Don't try and leg me up like that again, you little muppet. Trying to leg me up. It's not happening. And these boys over here. Now, they, I'm sure we've seen you somewhere before. Definite. I think he was at HMP. I think he accosted Live Free at HMP Umber. Definitely looked like him anyway. He was a little muppet as well. Nah, I'm just gonna go and have a word with these boys. Who you fucking what? Who do you want, mate? Who do you think you're talking like that? Your face, and that you'll be sorry. What are you? What? It's two meters. So stay yeah, up. and that's about fucking fifteen. Right. Right. Why are you even on here? Because I can do what I want. Who are you, my dad? Yeah, you're entitled, aren't you? Very Everybody much so. Yeah, yeah, please don't wait. Are we going to tell them to fuck off and all? Yeah. I'll wait to see. I'll film We're already filming it. We're already filming it. The reason behind it all is the government is saying that these places are absolutely rammed and as you can clearly see they're not. You've got one or two cars and I bet they are even members of staff. You've got more staff here, you have got more staff here than you have Covid patients. Do you know that? No, have a look. Don't engage, Chris. Don't engage, Chris. Big up, Chris. I said something to that man that I shouldn't have, and I apologise whether he accepts it or not. Ta, the lady said, Ta. You, mate, I wouldn't even give you a wood job. You're not big enough. You're not big enough, mate. And there you go as well, we've got interest from over here. Big up, mate. Big respect to you. Whoever he is. We're going to give you and the police an education in a minute. Pleasure as always. And how many have we got? I bet now I can tie all these people here, every single one of them. 
to this gate. There you go, mate. It is not illegal. It is not illegal to film in public. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is not illegal. Public access. Public access. Well, as you can see. Wait for police first. Hey, Mr. Policeman. Please, officer, don't give us a producer. Smashed that then, didn't we, bro? Yes, I think we did there. And here you have the great Marty Bladborough. And uh, just re look, I told you, monkey. and Chunky Monkey, and here we go. I told you I could attract all these guys to here now, didn't I? Now watch, whoa, 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 whoa. Which way is he going to go? Will he go left or will he go right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Santa, I've been called a lot of things, mate, but never, ever, ever, ever. Santa. Why don't you just do us a favour, mate? Let us get on with his jobs and crack on. If off. you left us alone, we won't be bothering you, don't would we? Don't come in here. It's, it's not it's dangerous, man. Look, it's stupid. That's why we know people Stop will be being here. ridiculous. It's dangerous. dangerous. Like what? <laughs> no, you have no I'm 63. Okay Listen, mate. I'm 63. I am 63 years old. Don't you think? I know where to walk and stand and everything else. You never know, you haven't got to hide this jacket, so you might be unsafe. It might be dangerous. Don't you know that it is disrespectful to talk to your elders like that? Don't do it. It is bad manners to speak to your elders in that manner. They're coming to do some shopping. Dismissed. You do know, calling somebody names is also the same. It's like banter, it's a two-way street, mate. Now, if you don't mind, would you like to leave the, leave this no. site, please? No, I told you already. Calling people a name under, under the uh, Public Order Act is no longer offence. You can even call a police officer a pig. And I have done it on numerous occasions, mate. While you're standing here, you're giving us a brilliant video, boys. Yeah, guys. So thank you very much. We're very grateful. Any interaction is better than no action. And... Uh, yeah, but, and what it is, they don't understand the law. They're not customers. They are customers. What are you selling? Customers. Have you ever heard so much bullshit? Okay, what's your back? Customers. Well, that must be two or three cars. We have been here 15 minutes. Oh, four cars. Four cars. Five cars. Things are really picking up now, boys. We have got five cars and we have got one, two, three, four, five. Five. Well, honest to God, mate, I congratulate you all because you are doing what you've got to do. I understand all that. We don't get any of you boys personally. And things just get heated. You're trying to stop us, we're trying to get in. And that's how it is, isn't it? And uh, has any of you all bothered to phone police yet? Yeah, yeah. Apparently so, but I don't think it's possible. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't stand here all day. I'm going to have to warm things up a bit, boys. So without further ado, let's bring it on for you. It might not be... Well, as you can say, what you like, love.
and as you can see it is all clearly accessible and uh, I think you're on the wrong side of the fence Let's bring it on through. <laughs> and as you can see, these boys. Let me get over here so my friend Marty can get a good picture. My friend Marty here with the camera. Can you just smile for him, boys? There you go, there's a man that wants to be on. There you go. Oh yes, is he trying to shout? Is he shouting me? Let's go see what he wants, have we? There's a lady over there as well, isn't there? Shall I go over there? Yes. And here we go, boys. Oops, I nearly tripped. I nearly tripped. And there you go, boys. Pardon? Why is that? Why is that? Come on, let's let, let's get back down here now. We've got the cars in the bit there. Right, let's do. I think. You don't want to inhibit the water. Yeah. So without further ado, we're gonna. <laughs> Without further ado, we smashed it there, boys. Absolutely smashed it. Uh, they tried to stop us going in, but Probably they couldn't do it. <laughs> it really didn't work. It didn't work, and uh, we are just uh, heading back. Where's the fucking policeman? Where's the. Uh, Where's uh, Cheeky Monkey? Yeah. Oh, now they're closing again! Ooh, someone's got a little bit of that! Does that mean the test site's closed, boys? Does that mean... Do you want to bet that I won't be climbing over? Don't be. <laughs> now that's what you should have done it first place, boys. You need people all the way across here, all day, because whether you like it or not, we will be back. Right, boys. Bye. Can you wait for camera? Don't worry about me. Worry about your scent, because I'll be back. See you soon. Well, uh, can I just say, people, that it's like it's quarter to four in the morning. Uh, I didn't get home while well one from York. We went to that Covid site and they arrested us. And uh, they, they knew who we was. One officer actually said, he followed me on YouTube. He said, do you like my videos? I thought, well, Sam. I said, well, you know I report on good cop, bad cop, don't you? 
And he said, yeah, of course I do, mate. Well, I didn't say mate. He said, yeah, yeah, of course I do. I've seen your videos. And I thought, yeah, you've been spying on me, haven't you? So we're already 50. So then when they took attitude that they did, they were trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Wolf in sheep's clothing. You know who I'm talking about, don't you, PC? Well, I'm going to expose you. And you officers that tried to prevent me from auditing the police station when you physically threw me out, you grabbed hold of me, one a year on each side, and that young fucking bird about five foot. I've noticed something about your police station. And Marty Blackburn noticed the same thing as well. Well, as you know, we refer to you as pigs. Sausages. Sausage, sausage. And like I told you, you little muppet, with two pips on your shoulders. After 12 hours, when you came to my cell and I said to you, have you contacted my solicitor yet? He said, uh, no, they're not ready to interview you yet. I said, what do you mean? We were only on the site 20 minutes. It's been 12 hours. What's the matter with you? There can't be any statements. There won't anybody apart from security staff. There were more security staff than there was patients for COVID tests. In fact, we only counted five cars in 25 minutes. And they were very insistent that the gate that they put up, that I've shown you on the video, I've shown them to be the tyrants that they are, you liars. Grasses. It doesn't matter which way you look at it, you can't put a security uniform on and then go against your community, mate, and become a drag, a grass. That's what you did. You allowed your boss to phone the police on us. You should have said, instead of saying, look, mate, well, come on, mate, Give us a break. We're, we're only doing this job. I said, yeah, mate, and we're doing our fucking job. And I called him something that I shouldn't. I think I called him a muppet or something like that. What it is, I get fired up and emotions take over me. And like you were saying, it was only doing a job. So fair dues, mate, you're doing a job. But do a great job, mate. Don't grass on your own people. Because that's what you're doing. You can ask me up. End of day, mate. It doesn't matter which way you dress it up. You contacted police. What for? Because we run right, rings round here. Because we played chase the old man. That's what you did. Shame on you. You chased the fucking old man. You didn't go for lad six foot fucking six could stride over your tape. You told them it was fencing. It was fucking tape. You lied. You lied. That makes you tyrants. It don't matter what we did. It's what you did that matters. You didn't uphold your jobs properly, boys. When you closed that gate and I congratulated you and said that's what you should have done boys even two security that's all you needed on that gate you'd have the lady stood there on her own anyway one more of you and you could have had a gate to police she could have done her job yeah 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 open the gate let them in close the gate next customer 
another hour or two later. Because, like I said, you only had five cars in 25 minutes. So what I'd like to say to you, Prime Minister, I can't even remember your name because I don't follow you people. Because none of you know what you're doing. You tell us not to do this, not to do that, and then you'll do it. How many MPs are from up Scotland even? Don't go visiting. She was straight off, wasn't she? Straight off. That other councillor from down London, yeah, he did the same thing as well. Yeah, yeah. You've done it as well, haven't you, Prime Minister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Praise the NHS. Are you having a laugh? Are you people having a laugh? If they've done the job and looked after patients that have been very ill, nobody's disputing that. That's why the nurses aren't there and doctors. You can't say, oh, I don't want to be a nurse now just because a bad disease comes along. This disease now is no different to what whooping cough, scarlet fever, polio. I've had all these uh, diseases about in my lifetime. My friend and neighbour next door, when I lived on Hillside at Briley, was the Roebuck's. Janice Roebuck was the last, and I honestly, honest to God, his name has gone right out of my head. I hate it when that happens. He lived at number seven, Mark Roebuck, I think his name was. I am 63, yeah, fair dues. I am losing plot a bit. Fair dues. And I think things are getting worse because of all, all spinal cord damage. They're basically one of the top deans in country from the uh, Clement private clinic at Sheffield. has told me that the fifth and sixth, what I actually had was, in 2013, they diagnosed it in 2009, I had a fifth and sixth anita cervical disectomy with fixation and fusion. Basically, they put your head in a main, in a halo, bolt you to a, operating table and the sky you see at front of my neck is where they actually go in uh, I don't know if you can see it I don't know if you can see it on that but it's roughly a couple of inches long and they go in there believe it or not and that's because they put your head right back bolt you with manger the uh, halo that goes round your head and it bolts into the side of your head, that is horrible, that. And then that is actually bolted to operating table. So you can't even involuntary twitch because when they go in and round, they have to avoid a lot of nerves, other nerves. And that's where all damage can be caused as well during the op damage to the sciatic nerve and other nerves that run down your arms and that. Which is what the damage did me, so it affects all my right hand side mainly. But the way I found out and had this other MRI done that I had all this severe damage and it was actually lights out, basically, was all the symptoms I had down the right hand side I was now getting down the left hand side and I was twitching more because when it's trapped or bone uh, is touching nerve that's when it creates that twitch 
a way to describe the twitch to you. You know when you've got a, your legs like resting on a nerve and it starts bouncing and you just leave it as it is and it'll keep on bounce, bouncing. And it's another uh, non-controllable bouncing. So you, the longer you don't move, the longer it'll keep bouncing. Well, imagine that through every part of your body and not being able to control it. I've been stood outside in the sun with friends in the garden in the sun, a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. And I've been twitching like mad. And they used to stand next to me and look and they used to say to me, are you, are you cold or what? And I said, what are you on about? They said, you're twitching like mad. And my doctors kept telling me they went out wrong. And that was from, right from 2009. No, they diagnosed it in 2009. It was actually a couple of years before that. All the twitching and then stuff were going on. And I kept going to my doctors and they kept saying that they were not wrong. Till eventually I threatened them and I said, right, I'm going to go pay for an MRI. And if there's out wrong, I'm going to sue you. So they sent me for MRI anyway, which saved me a few bob. Turns out, a day later, doctors like that spied through my window. Through my living room window. So I went to the door and I said, uh, oh God, this doesn't look good, mate. Because my mate was sat there as well. He was actually building a joint at the time. And my doctor said that he'd seen what he was doing, it, but he totally agreed with it. He, liked, he believed it, it relieved pain. And that's what I smoked it for at the time, but I had to stop because I didn't like the nicotine. And when they diagnosed all the damage in my neck, I thought, because I was going to be in hospital a few days, when you had a smoke and you for a couple of days, even just a day, if you were like me and heavy smoker, you coughing, phlegm up and everything. Well, when you've had severe operation like that on your neck, you don't want to be coughing, do you? So as soon as they diagnosed it, I stopped smoking from that day on. And it will thought to that, and fear of hospitals, because I do fear hospitals. Although I worship the surgeons, I do worship surgeons. Because to me, they are the nearest thing to God as I see it. I don't believe there's a God because I don't believe God would allow Roman Catholic people to allow a known C of E be an altar boy in their church. And they can't deny that because when I went there, it's on my records. And I'm sorry I keep going back to that. And that's because of all this mental behaviour and all this. All boils back to that. And it's lift free at Army Prison, first video I ever did, that spurred me to do this, as I've said before. But my reason for contacting him also i thought pick pro quo i give him information he can sort me out and get me into this rehabilitation unit he's talking about so he saw the auditor no sorry strike that auditor i'm not an auditor I always thought auditor were odd, but then when things happened and it way things happened and other people thought same thing as well. Because we're actually reporting. I'm reporting them bent coppers, including the ones that attacked me. Back to that subject. 
When they physically launched me out, they knew I was going to audit the police station. Because I told them. I even told the little inspector about less than five foot he is. Bless him. It looks like that little screw at Armley. It, not Armley, HMP Umber that set lift free up with dogs. He, he, he even looked like him, that little cunt. Well, this inspector came down to my cell and he was saying, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep you 24 hours. I said, crack on, mate, crack on. I said, now I'll tell you fucking what as well. Get out of this cell. So he ran off with his tail between his legs, shouting abuse. So I thought, oh yeah, do you want to start that game, do you? Piggy. So I started shouting piggy rhymes through the door, calling them all piggies and dismissing them. And then I'd be as nice as hell, excuse me, officer. Have you got a cup of coffee, please? One sugar. And as soon as they gave it me through the arch, I'd say, you dismissed, piggy. Dismissed. When I was at the charge desk, taking my bottoms off, the police station bottoms, and they were saying, no, no, keep them on, keep them on. Uh, you can just take your bag. I said, listen, I came in in my clothes. I'm leaving in them. So I ripped the bag open outside the charge desk and started getting dressed. Main thing was, was to see if they'd left me phone. And they had the Muppets. Even after I told them, even while I was in the interview room, setting the interview up, I told them when I get out of this police station, because I fully expected them to keep me camera, keep me phone. I said, when I get out of this police station, because I didn't think it was going to take them all night, I'm going to go straight away and buy a phone and I'm coming back and I'm auditing this police station. I said, I love bent coppers. Pig, 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 pig. Pig. Sausage, sausage. It's on the tape. I'm getting tape. I'm going to put the tape up, the interview tape. Apparently, you you get them? They do three tapes, three CDs in the machine. And one, the seal up with your name on it, and it's put in the charge room. So you can ask them for that. They said it was going to be put in my bag, but I'm coming for it. Now, nah, because they knew I was going to audit them. And I've got a legitimate reason to be there. And I told them about good cop, bad cop, and that there were no such thing as good cop. Because even as a cleaner, any one of you, if you worked as a cleaner in any police station in the country you want, if you want to get a job, Get two, and I'll come with you and prove my point. Within one week, we can find out who most of the police bent in that police station are. So let me ask you this. If we can do that, that little dwarf inspector, how's he got to be inspector? Because I was supposed to believe he doesn't know. Well, that's how thick they are. When I slipped that bag open, I saw my phone. I thought, yes. So first thing I did was grab the phone into my hand and turning it on while I was getting dressed. And I kept looking at it. They were all stood there looking at me, trying to rush me on. 
So, and I know now why, because they, they know about the blockers. And if they march me out at police station fast enough, their blockers will block my signal. But what, they didn't bank on. That last fuel, that last doorway was actually public accessible. So the blocker didn't work in that part, so my phone turned straight on, I was both straight on. And I've got your officers assaulting me. I have got you on video. You're getting exposed. The video's getting uploaded and I'm suing you. I've just got out of the bath. It is now 10 past four in the morning. I can't sleep on that hyped up about it. And at first I didn't think uh, damage. I just thought the bruising I could feel. I just thought it was just because I've knocked myself up a bit. Being laid on that wooden bench. But when they, two of them grabbed me in the corridor because they knew when my phone were loading up. They were even trying to look at the screen to see because it had a thing on it saying oh, it would all block. And as soon as I got through that first door, it lit up. So pressing the buttons. By now, there's a copper on each arm. And they've physically 